Hello everybody and welcome to the next of our species speculation videos for Jurassic World Evolution 3. And today we're going to be discussing perhaps the most anticipated feature that Jurassic World Evolution 3 could bring, which is Cenozoic Species. Now I'm only covering mammals and birds in this video, the reptiles such as Megalania and Titanoboa will be saved for another video. So today we're going to be discussing all the mammals and birds that I would actually love to see added in a Cenozoic roster for Jurassic World Evolution 3. Now there are a few, fair few here, many of them were sort of researched picks as I got stumped a few times as to what animals could be added. So there's a great diversity of animals here that we could potentially get and so let's begin. So we're going to begin with the carnivores. So first of all is Smilodon, of course, a species from Camp Cretaceous and by far the most iconic of all Cenozoic carnivores. It just has to be in as like a Cenozoic roster without Smilodon is an incomplete one. Anosion or the Direwolf is an extinct species of canid that has probably been made more popular by Game of Thrones, but was actually one of the most prolific predators in the Americas during the Pleistocene and earlier periods I believe. Yeah, so this, this could be our alternative to the raptors, so the mammalian equivalent, you could say, as these guys would be pack hunters, and I would certainly love to see how a, a canid would pack hunt in Jurassic World Evolution. Andrusarchus is our next species. Now, this animal is a mysterious one. It is supposedly the largest mammalian carnivore ever discovered. However, we only have one fossil of it. And it was found in Mongolia. It was either no, I think it was found in either Mongolia or Pakistan by Roy Chapman Andrews. And uh, yeah, all we have is that top jaw. So we really don't know what the rest of the animal looked like. Whether it looked more like an entelodon or looked like this, a giant wolf. But uh, either way, if we got this this guy in Jurassic World Evolution Three, I think they would go for the wolfish appearance as, of course, you know it from Walking with Beasts as having that sort of look. But they could be very creative with it and we could get something completely different. Thylacosmilus is another Macarodont. I think it's a Macarodont. It's at least a saber-toothed cat. But it is a, an interesting one as it does have a pouch, supposedly. I, I remember reading that somewhere that it actually had a pouch. I don't know whether it does, but either way, it is a another saber-toothed cat that could be added as it is the next most popular after Smilodon, I believe. Our next predators include Arctodus, one of the largest bears of all time, and is an extinct short-faced bear, with its current relatively spectacled bear as the last of the line. This guy would be really great to see, as a bear would certainly be a powerful animal in Jurassic World Evolution. Deodon is an entelodont from the Miocene of North America, and out of all the entelodonts, Deodon was certainly the one I would like to see the most. Hyenodon as well is a very popular animal found in both Asia and North America uh, among with various different species of Hyenodon. However, I would vouch for Hyenodon gigas. Gigas or gigas? It, it's one of the two, but it was one of the largest. Thylacolio, the marsupial lion, which is actually related to koalas and wombats. I would love to see this guy as we could potentially get climbing in the next game. As I would certainly love to see this guy climbing around through the trees and even animals like the Scorpius Rex and Indoraptor climbing up on buildings as a sort of ambush point. So that would be cool. I don't, I don't think I mentioned climbing in my update features video. Some other predators include Panthera spelia, also known as the Eurasian cave lion, one of the largest big cats ever known. And yeah, I would certainly love to see these guys, as Prehistoric Kingdom has done them great justice. Magistotherium is another very cool large carnivore from, I believe, Africa. They're a huge animal, and some large mammalian carnivores would certainly be great, like animals bigger than that of Smilodon. Sort of like how we've got our dinosaur predators currently, there's all different sizes and shapes. Same with Simba Kubwa, I think that's how you say it, or Simba Kubwa. It, it, it's one of the two, but the, these guys are, are apparently one of the largest mammalian carnivores yet discovered, uh, and they might be related to Hyenodon, I'm not too sure, I've barely heard of this guy, but I thought it would be cool to mention. 
Amphicyon is another really cool animal known as a bear dog as it has sort of the musculature of a bear but the body of a, of a canid. These guys would be another great pack hunting animal as they are bigger than the uh, Anocyon or Dire Wolf. So it would be great to get that sort of difference in size in that ratio of animals as well. Another Intellodont I'd like to mention here is Archaeotherium. It's one of the largest and I would certainly love to see its unique face. As something that Intellodonts have is different skull shapes and Archaeotheriums is very different to that of Deodon. Pachycrocuta, also known as the giant hyena, would also be a great addition. As I, I sort of do just love the prehistoric versions of many current species, it's like giant hyenas, and what, what is below it, Mirasynonyx, also known as the American cheetah. Built similar to that of a mountain lion, it would be a very cool animal to see as the fastest animal in our Cenozoic roster. Thylacine, I would like to put here, even though it would be sort of sad to see it, uh, as it is of recent extinction relative to the rest of these. But I, it's an extinct animal, so I guess it counts. But I, don't, I, I wouldn't put my put my bets on Thylacine actually being part of the roster. I just put it here because it, it would be cool to see nonetheless. Now onto the herbivores. Now, there are certainly more herbivores than there are carnivores in this roster idea. So the first is the iconic woolly mammoth, with the alternative being a Colombian mammoth, or we could get both. The woolly mammoth is much smaller than the Colombian mammoth, and Colombian mammoths were certainly one of the largest land mammals ever. And either way, these two would make a great duo for mammoths. The woolly rhinoceros, also known as Coelodonta, would also be a great addition, as these guys are probably one of the next most iconic animals of the actual Ice Age. Megaloceros, also known as the giant Irish elk, would be a great herding animal here, as they're certainly a huge prey item for many of the predators I mentioned to go after. Speaking of huge prey, Megatherium, also known as the giant ground sloth, would be another great addition here. One of the most famous of all prehistoric mammals, it would be foolish not to get a Megatherium or other ground sloth in here. I'm sure Best and Sloth would be very happy to see a sloth in Jurassic World Evolution. Arsinoetherium is one of the one of the more interesting herbivores of the Eocene, and you'd probably know it better from the Walk of Dinosaur special sea monsters that featured Nigel Marvin. And yeah, that one in in that in that short had a trunk, but I don't know whether it actually did have a tapir-like trunk in reality. But either way, it's a very cool animal and would be semi-aquatic, so make use of the water depth feature that could potentially be added. Paraceratherium is the largest of all known land mammals, although I think it's actually topped by Paleoloxodon, which is a large elephant. But either way, Paraceratherium is certainly one of the most famous giant mammals that we know of, and I would certainly love to see it as the mammalian equivalent to the sauropods. Elasmotherium as well would be a very cool addition, whether it's a Siberian unicorn or not. It would certainly be a cool addition as they are much bigger than the woolly rhinos, so they would be a great bit of diversity here. Sort of how Spinoceratops is to Triceratops. And Calicotherium is another really cool addition that we could potentially see. Related to horses, these guys are very bizarre in, in the fact they walk on their knuckles or these different, different shaped toes. Calicotheres are very odd creatures and I'd certainly love to see at least one kind. A second kind of Calicothere is from North America in Moropus, or Moropus. This animal lived at around the same time as Deodon, so it'd be cool to get sort of a predator-prey um, sort of thing going on. Didicurus is one of the large armadillos that we know of, with a club tail, unlike the cousin Neglyptodon that we'll see later. These guys are from South America, and yeah, I, I would love to see one of these guys as our mammalian ankylosaurs. Dinotherium is another really cool elephant species, and yeah, I think Walking with Beasts said they were as tall as giraffes, but what I find most interesting about Dinotherium is that tusks hang from the lower jaw and point downwards. I, I think that would be actually a really cool diverse feature in there, and yeah, Dinotherium would just be a cool bit of African diversity. Megacerops as well, giving us a bit of a diverse 
kind of animal here. They're not, they may look like rhinos, but they're actually not that closely related, I don't believe. But they do have bizarre formation on their snout. That is mistaken for horn, but it's actually solid bone. So these guys are actually a cool addition, as they are also from the Eocene, much like our Cinematherium. Some herding animals that we could potentially see would be Synthetoceros, a bizarre herbivore that would be a very interesting addition. The males, in this image at least, sport a very long nose horn that for forms a split at the end. But I, I, I heard of these guys, I think, first from Ice Age 3. I think it was Bill Hader's character in that film. But these guys would be cool additions, it's just a diverse herding animal. Toxodon would certainly be one of the heftier herding species that we get. They, they were actually discovered by Charles Darwin um, back when he visited South America. And they would also be semi-aquatic, as Prehistoric Park depicted them at least. There are plenty of mammals here that can be semi-aquatic really. The Steppe Bison is not one of them however, but it is a very large relative of the American Bison. That would be a fantastic addition, as sort of a, a more defensive uh, herding animal. And animals like Uintotherium, which is one of the most bizarre animals I've ever seen, sort of has the horns of a giraffe, the body of a rhino and everything else that could be from something else. Um, but they are a very bizarre animal that would certainly make for an interesting appearance in the game. Now for some Australian species, Diprotodon, a large Diprotodontid, which is a relative, uh, which is an actually, a, I'm not going to say a relative of wombats as they aren't necessarily, but they are still marsupials. So the Diprotodonts are an extinct uh, group of marsupials that went extinct at the end of the Pleistocene. And yeah, they're, they're some of the most iconic prehistoric ma mammals from Australia. And alongside Procoptodon, the giant short-faced kangaroo, they would both make great additions to the Australian roster. Sibotherium is, I think, a relative of giraffes, but having a much more interesting horn formation on their heads. But they, they'd be a very cool addition as well, getting our giraffe equivalent somewhat. And Platy Belladon is another very bizarre herbivore that would certainly make an interesting addition. Uh, I think they're related to the animal that's on the next slide. The... Okay, now it's the slide after that. But Megalonyx is another ground sloth that we could get. I think Sid the Sloth from Ice Age is a Megalonyx, so it'd be very cool to see that here. Ursa Spelius, also known as the Eurasian Cave Bear, would be another cool addition to the Ice Age roster. Arctodus may be a large short-faced bear, but getting a true cave bear would be a very cool addition here. Mirotherium is an early relative of elephants that was also semi-aquatic, at least Walking with Beasts depicted it as such, but either way it would be a very cool animal to see the transition from early elephants into true elephants like the American Mastodon, a very cool species that's iconic from, North, from the Americas I should say, and yeah I, the interesting story about the Mastodon was so cool in, I think it was David Attenborough's Natural History Museum Alive, where he talked about Cox the Leviathan, which was, I think, the first Mastodon skeleton ever found, where the showrunner actually portrayed it as a fearsome predator with tusks that pointed outwards, which was very interesting, to say the least. But when it was reconstructed, it was found to be more like a mammoth. So, yeah. Here we go, Gonthotherium, a species of elephant relative from Africa. They have a very bizarre appearance with the tusks coming from the chin, much like with di Dinotherium, but also having the tusks coming from the cheek, from the upper jaw, I should say, as modern elephants do. So they'd be very interesting additions, a sort of four-tusked elephant, although I think that's actually a real thing that uh, was on the planet. I don't have it here, but it would certainly be interesting as well. Gigantopithecus is high on many people's wish list for a Cenozoic roster, as this is the largest known species of ape, and even though it's not King Kong, it's as close as evolution has ever gotten to that. And it would certainly be interesting to see Gigantopithecus having the unfortunate experience of having to go up against a dinosaur, but it would certainly be cool to see Gigantopithecus hold its own. 
but it, it would be another really cool addition. Macrokenia is another very cool herbivore species that was actually featured in Walking with Beasts. However, you can tell from this picture that the one in Walking with Beasts was very different in terms of the head. So it has been debated for a long time that Macrokenia either had a trunk or sort of an inflatable snout, much like the Saiga antelope. Which, whatever Frontier decides to go for if Macrokenia is added, it would certainly be a great herding animal from South America to see. Glyptodon is another armoured animal that we could potentially see related to Didacurus. It would certainly be a great addition to diversify the giant armadillos as this guy did not have a club tail, but it was armour plated. Now onto the birds. So the birds that we have here are Harpagornis, the Haas Eagle from New Zealand, which would be a very cool large predatory bird to see as well as Argentavis, an animal that I'm pretty sure gained most of its popularity from Ark Survival Evolved. But either way, it would still be a very cool species, related to modern condors and vultures, just much larger. Pelagornis would also be a very cool addition here, one of the largest seabirds ever known. Sort of a Quetzalcoatlus equivalent, as that I think they were actually much bigger than Argentavis. And the iconic Dodo of Mauritius would be another very cool addition here as well. Though it is in the similar boat to the thylacine where it is an animal that's not necessarily as prehistoric as you might think. But it would still be an interesting addition as sort of like the prey animal. Sort of our homolocephaly of the Cenozoics. Some other really cool birds are the terror birds. Stuff like Kalankan and Titanus. Both from different parts of time but having very different heads. Kalankan's head is much more elongated and Titanus has a more con constricted and shorter head. But terror birds nonetheless would be one of the coolest predators to see added to Jurassic World Evolution as I think they just fit the, they fit the game better than most of the mammals. These two other birds we have here, Dinornis, also known as the giant mower, was the primary prey item of the Haast Eagle. And it would certainly be really cool to see one of the largest birds ever known added into the game as this guy is probably very similar in size to most of the dinosaurs. And our last bird, Dromornis, also known, I think, I think it's also known as the Demon Duck of Doom in Australia, but this guy's a herbivore, so it sort of um, changed the tide at there. Even though Dinornis is also a herbivore, Dromornis does resemble a terror bird more, so I can see where people would get confused. Now our last species are a couple of aquatics, even though I've got Megalodon here, uh, we've got it now, so we don't really, I can't really think of any other aquatic species that would be not the following. So all these marine species are whales, or at least cetaceans, or cetacean relatives in some cases. Ambulocetus is one of the earliest whales ever known, and would certainly make a great addition as a semi-aquatic species. I just felt like if we were to get any other marine Cenozoic species, if we didn't get one of the walking whales, I would have been a, a little bit disappointed, to be honest. Uh, Leviathan, also known as, I, I don't know if it actually has another name, but either way, it's a hypercarnivorous sperm whale that actually fed on other whales, and was probably the rival to Megalodon. I think it actually was. I think Megalodon perhaps preyed on Leviathan, but Leviathan would also occasionally prey on Megalodon, so it's a very interesting dynamic that I've seen played out several times in paleo art. Basilosaurus is certainly prehistory's most famous extinct whale, and yeah, I would, I would love to see this guy. Walking with Beast made this guy look so cool, and I feel like Jurassic World Evolution should add Basilosaurus. And with these whales, it would be a good opportunity to add breathing animations at the surface. So, to not make it seem like all these animals just have infinite air in their lungs. Our last consideration is Odobinocetops, also known as the whale that walks on its teeth, as this animal, much like a narwhal, has a very long tusk. However, it is a single tusk on one side that is extended, while the one on the other side is much shorter. I think it's only the males that had these, at least according to Nigel Marvin, but these guys would be another smaller cetacean that I would love to see. And there you have it. So the Cenozoic reptiles will be in the next video. 
but the mammals are, and the birds are certainly one of the most anticipated features that Jurassic World Evolution 3 could introduce. There's a whole range of Cenozoic species that can still be considered. Like, I certainly haven't considered all the ones we know of, but I certainly considered a lot of them. <laughs> like, there are several other small species, like many of the small early horses, like I think it's uh, Propeliotherium or Hyracotherium. There's one, one of the two. Uh, Leptictidium as well would be a cool insectivore. Um, but yeah, let me know what your Cenozoic mammal roster and birds as well would be. And you can include reptiles in there, as I will be covering some Cenozoic reptiles in the next one. But yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate the like. And if you would like to, subscribe as we are approaching 2,000 subscribers. And I would certainly love to make that by the end of the year. And yeah. Enjoy more anticipation and speculation for Jurassic World Evolution 3 as we await its announcement. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.